nice uh, nice stick to keep this open while we fill this up with seed. Well, you may be wondering what we're doing with a cedar. We partnered up with Project Apis M. They do this uh, Seeds for Bees program. So what this is, they are providing us with a cover crop seed that we're gonna be planting in the orchard. And we'll just have them down the center rows. The idea behind it is we, we got we got to it too late, um, so it's not gonna bloom right at the right time, but the idea behind it is that it will provide a forage for the bees along with the almonds. It just really helps promote the bees, promotes bee health. And so that's why we are doing it, but we're also doing it because it also helps obviously with soil health. Um, those of you who have worked with cover crops before, it, it definitely helps out with the soil. So that's one of the reasons, obviously we're excited for the bee health, but we're also excited for uh, the soil health as well. We're planting later in the year, than the, so it's not gonna bloom the same time as the trees are. Uh, it'll be blooming after, but we will still have bees around and out here and it'll still be a nice uh, way to help promote bee health because as almond farmers, we are trying to make sure that we do our best um, to keep healthy bees. I know there's been a lot of articles, there's been a lot of things that people have talked about where almond farmers are killing bees. Well, obviously we don't want that to happen because without bees, we wouldn't be around. So anything we can do to help promote bee health, we want to do. So let me stop filming so I can help Skyler load this up. Look at this strapping young man. Wow. There you go. We're just about to, ready to head out. So the seed that we're actually doing, uh, we've got canola, uh, there's some peas, some triticale, and uh, some mustard, radish, and bell beans. So that is, those are the seeds that we are doing out here for this cover crop. Canola, mustard, radish, pea, triticale, and bell beans. Kind of want to just like take a handful and pump them in your mouth. I wouldn't. All right, so I went with the older tractor instead of our nice orchard cab tractor, new tractor, because I wanted to be able to hear and see the cedar better. And right now, while uh, when there's not a crop on the trees, the branches don't hang into the centers as bad. And so I was okay using this one. Plus, it's just fun being able to drive these old ones like this. This is one that I can actually work on. But it's working pretty good. We had to do uh, some definite adjusting this morning. But it's not the newest or nicest planter, but it's doing the job. Let's see what our gauges say. Oh, fuel level, oh, uh, that gauge is broken. Oh, RPM, oh no, nope, that one doesn't work either. How about our temperature? Oh, well, well, that one's broken too. Well, we'll either go till we run out of fuel or it overheats. Well, I was able to do about 17 acres on one pass. Uh, and then we had to go get chickens. We got 60,000 chickens today, so that was pretty neat. I had some lunch and now we're back. I'm gonna load up for the next load, do the next 17 acres, so. Just in time. Nice and full of seed. 
So yeah, you can see there's the there's a different varieties of size seeds. Well, I thought I'd stop and get off and kind of show you how it's doing. So you can see that it's cutting in a little bit and it's just laying that seed right out there. And then we got this chain link that drags behind it, kind of hopefully covers it up. The reason that I didn't do any tillage before I did this, because typically that's what you do, you kind of till it up and that way it has something to at least plant it and kind of get it buried under with is I don't want my orchard floors to, I want my orchard floors to stay as smooth and flat as possible. And with that, I don't wanna continue to just keep tilling it up or to disturb it because then it has to settle each time that you do that. So I didn't wanna mess with that. And so I'm just doing it this way and uh, we're hoping that it takes. I still feel like it's doing a decent job. The centers are drier where, than where it is closer to the trees from the last irrigation that we did. Uh, and so they're not able to penetrate as better as much as the outsides have been able to do, but I think it's still doing a pretty decent job. So I'll be surprised if we don't have at least a, a pretty decent looking cover crop um, coming from that. Well, we had to stop and get some chickens. We got our last barn of chickens, but uh, had lunch and then came back to get on. And I was like, yeah, I need a beverage, it's beverage time. But I didn't have a cup holder on this. So I just decided to make my own and I took a piece of angle iron, cut the right size piece of PVC, got a clamp, put that clamp around the, around the angle iron, self-tapped the angle iron onto the fender here. And I was like, hey, look, perfect fits this perfectly but I don't always use one of these sometimes I just like to have it straight out of the can so don't you worry got our adapter here so got this adapter and I put two self tapping screws through the side right there serves two purposes one it makes it so that this is a nice tight fit in there and oh I don't have my can I gotta go get my can so those self-tapping screws serve the purpose of making the PVC adapter a little tight fit in there. But then it makes it so that this doesn't just sink all the way down to the bottom, that I can actually just grab it. Oh, there we go. And pull it out. There you go right there, baby. Redneck ingenuity at its finest. Well, I apologize if you guys can't hear me that great and if the video is not as great as quality as it usually is. I am just out here mowing this cover crop and I'm just about done and I realize I haven't done any filming of what this cover crop has turned into. I just have the planting. So we are out here and it, we, like I said before, we got this, uh, we got this cover crop planted. We got the seed delivered too late. Um, and so it wasn't able to bloom when we wanted it to bloom. We wanted it to bloom the same time that the trees did. And obviously the trees have passed their bloom. They're no longer uh, in bloom. Nuts are forming and uh so we are a little too late with that but there are still a lot of bees out here doing their work i don't know if you guys can see all the bees right here and so the idea behind this was we wanted this cover crop to bloom at the same time that the trees were and it just helps promote the bee health um, instead of basically having them eating steak all day like i had a bee uh, fellow beekeeper who, uh, not fellow beekeeper, I'm not a beekeeper, just a friend on Instagram. Um, he said it, it'd be like the equivalent of us eating steak all day long and not having anything else added into our diet. And so this just helps promote a healthy diet for them. It keeps them active. And uh, so we wanted this to bloom the same time, but that didn't happen. Um, and so right now we're gonna be start watering our trees and we don't want the trees to have to compete uh, for water with the cover crop and so we are going to mow this down and also we don't want to be able to just for checking sprinklers when we do irrigate it's going to be a hassle having all of this cover crop here so we're going to mow it down and uh and be able to start doing that kind of stuff but it got really tall and this this isn't even the thickest or tallest spot of it i wish i would have thought of this before we had some areas that were real tall real thick even thicker and taller than this area right here so i'm up here this is trevor bales some of you probably follow him Randy, master pie player, and uh, this is going to be added into a video, but this is a whole other trip that I'm doing. We came up to Minnesota, and look at these huge, crazy things that we don't really see in California. There's parts I'm sure that have them, but in our area, we don't see these at all. But 
I showed you guys, you know, what the planting do in our cover crop, that sweet, you know, probably planter from the 70s that, you know, you do this lever and you jack this lever and you, you smack it on the side and it'll go. Look at these things. So Randy was saying this is a 32 row planter. 32 row, yep. Okay, and then so he was saying, so you got all these lights here. So what are all those lights doing? <clears throat> They're all just modules telling you that everything's functioning normal. But, uh, but that one's, like this one here's running the airbag for the down pressure for our closing system behind the seat dredge. And then there's, there's two motors because it's a multi-hybrid. So we have two different hybrids we can plant at the same time. One will stop, the other start. And the modem that runs all of that, and then our fertilizer modem up there that meters out the fertilizer. That's amazing. So yeah, a little little different than a uh, little different than the system that we are using, but uh, it's amazing. But this shop and these equipment up here, and it's just crazy. Contra, it's impressive. Yeah.